It's time for baseball on MLB Network. Today it's the finale of this four game set between the Miami Marlins and the Colorado Rockies. Major League Baseball on MLB Network is next. Antonio Senzatella, the right-hander from Venezuela, gets the starting nod in this one. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? Hey, you can't always judge a pitcher by the numbers. I know the ERA is into the fours coming into this start, but he's actually a pretty solid pitcher. And every once in a while, he could throw some decent games in there. It's not easy having an ERA under four in baseball. He's slightly over that, Leading but this guy's a better pitcher than that ERA indicates. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Line drive, and that's a base hit in the center field. I mean, an absolute bullet line drive on the first pitch of the game. I always wonder how many pitchers were so. Fr it has to frustrate the living heck out of you because if I'm leading off and I never did it in my career, I'd be pulling the trigger every 0 0 pitch. That might be the best pitch you'll see all day. Stepping in now, Miguel Rojas. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. These Rockies guys, they've been playing better than 500 baseball of late, five and three in their last eight games. Yeah, thanks, Matty V. Hey, you know what, D-Roll, this is one they'd like to win right here. They win the first game of the series, drop game two, win game three. They'd like to keep the momentum going here, D-Roll, win two in a row and win three out of four in this series. Yeah, you want to definitely get a chance to win this series today play good baseball you don't want to go on that seesaw we'll give you one we'll take one they need to figure out a way to get it done today the 0 2 delivery and he'll take the fastball here inside off the plate it's one and two hey I get it he wants to set up that breaking ball down and away but that 0 2 fastball wasn't even close. Here's the one and two delivery swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Tapia will settle under it to make the play for the first out as the runner will have to head back to first. Batting third. The left field number 20. With that a look at the batting order for the Marlins. Who do you have your eye on Dan. Well, definitely watch out for Corey Dickerson. He's really excelled against right-handed pitching this season, hitting over 300 against them coming in. So given the matchup he's faced with here, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him make some noise at the plate. Digging in, Corey Dickerson. For the series, he's 3 for 12. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Ball. Time for a look at our umpires in this one. Behind the plate is Earl Hendricks. Hey, D-Row, Earl Hendricks, he, he's not a guy that gets a lot of complaints by either players or pitchers. He's a pretty good umpire. Yeah, Dan, Earl's got a great track record in his sport. He's pretty consistent, and overall, he's been a fair umpire. Runs outside, so it goes to 2-0 and now. That's a great call right there. Fastball away with a guy who's got some jets on first base. Almost like a hybrid pitch out. Great for a catcher if that guy's running. Easy transfer throw to second base. And he'll dive back in. And another throw over. And he'll get dirty, but he's back in safely. VR, base runner at first with one out. And again, a throw over. And he'll dive back in safely. Now the 2 0 home. Swing and a ball sliced foul into the seats down the left field line. It's going to be back to some serious T work if he can't put that pitch in play right in his wheelhouse. 3 and 1 to the Marlins left fielder. We're seeing a good AB here from the three hole hitter. 
if he can work a walk or pick up a hit here, he's going to put that cleanup guy in a really good position to do some damage in this first inning. And he'll get back in safely. Three and one, here it is. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Toppy is in pursuit. He gets there, and that's the second out. Had a long way to go to make that running catch, and here it is again with the show track numbers. Took a great angle at it, showed nice closing speed, and ended up running close to 110 feet to finally bring it in. No doubt in efforts his teammates are appreciative of. Up next from Miami, Jesus Aguilar, and he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. First offering on its way, and they pitch out here, but nothing's going on. Two out base runner aboard in the top of the first. That one's going to find the seats. Strike one. Now the one and one pitch. Misses for the second ball. Two and one. Now the two one pitch. Strike two. Don't know for sure, but I think he may have been taking there thinking his teammate on first was going to be on the move. Two out with the man at first. And he popped him up. Arenado in foul ground. And this will land foul. Now a throw over to first, and he'll get back in standing. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. Swing and a ground ball to third. Gloved by Arenado. Throw to Murphy to take care of him, and that'll end the inning. So no runs on a hit here, no errors, one man left on. The Rockies coming up. We've got no score. Jordan Yamamoto gets the starting assignment for the fish in this matchup. Dan, any thoughts? This guy's a fun guy to watch pitch. It seems like the more trouble he gets in, the better he pitches. Really tough to hit with runners in scoring position, and that's one of the reasons why his team loves when he's out on the mound. He doesn't give up very many crooked numbers. Striding in for the Rockies, Rymel Tapia, and he really thrives in the batter's box here at home. Something to keep an eye on in this one. First delivery to him on the way. A fastball here as he'll take a look at ball one. One and oh. These Marlins as they take the field this afternoon come in scuffling a bit of late. Just two and four over their last six games. Yeah, Maddie, dropping their last game. Now they find themselves at 500 again. They got to find a way to get a hot streak. You cannot continue to go peaks and valleys throughout the course of the season and ride that five line all year. At some point, you're going to have to take seven out of ten, eight out of ten to get this going in the right direction. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's two and one. A little late on this one as it's lifted the other way down the left field line. And that's in there. Base hit.
And that'll bring in Garrett Hampson as he'll take a look at a high strike that time. It's nothing in one. He'll check in here at 256, seven homers, and 30 RBIs. A one count. Here's the pitch. Drops one down here, and he'll try to beat it out. There's one. But he'll put this in his pocket and be content with just the one out. That was kind of a high degree of difficulty play that time. You see the off balance throw to the second base, and he couldn't get a lot on it, but they did get the out. In now for Colorado, Nolan Arenado. He enters this one second in the National League round trip category. You know, D, we're worried that the summer right now, this guy's power has been off the charts. Looks like he's going to be able to do this all season long. I think he is, Dan, and the ball's going to start flying now. Weather's starting to warm up in certain parts of the country. We're getting into the middle, late part of summer. You're going to see some epic home runs down the stretch. Strike one to start the at-bat. The 0 1 pitch. He's running. Pitch misses low. The throw down. He's in there easily as the throw bounces on the way down. Good steal of second there, and that really sets up the middle of this order to drive in a run and break this scoreless ball game. Always great if you can score first early in the game. Fastball well outside. Runner at second here with one man out. It's going to even up the count at two and two. There's one that misses inside, and the count's run full now. Three and two. You would think in this situation, maybe with a base open, he'd just pitch around him and put him on first. But not with the guy in the on deck circle. He's going to attack this hitter. Ready now with the payoff pitch. Rounded weakly down the line toward third. Good battle here. This will be the seventh pitch coming up. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. One thing to know is not all strikeouts are created equal. Right there, he goes down on strikes, but he really made that guy on the mound work for it. And when you're doing that in the first inning, it can have an effect on how deep he's going to be able to go into this start. There's a big difference between that and going down on three or four pitches. Here's Charlie Blackman now. One ball, no strikes to count. Misses low and inside. Two balls and no strikes. Now you can see he's working around this guy right here. Why not? First base is open. Walk wouldn't be the worst thing in this spot. Two out here and a runner at second. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. And that'll get down out there near the wall. He pulls into second safely as they jump ahead with a run scoring on the play. This is why it's so important to give your cleanup hitter an opportunity to hit with runners in scoring position. He does just what he's supposed to do, lacing a double and driving in a run, just like you draw it up. And that'll bring up the speedy outfielder, David Dahl, as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball 1-0. Good zip on that one as he just throws it by him for strike one. The set and the one one just a bit high with the fastball but didn't get the call.
taken. Strike two called, and it's even at two and two. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Some pitchers fall into the trap of giving in on three and two because they don't want to walk the guy. But with the base open, it's not the end of the world if you do. You still need to make a quality pitch. Payoff pitch on its way. The bouncer to the left side. And the throw just does beat him at the bag, so the side is retired. I think a few of these folks need to get out of the sun. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. So digging in now, Brian Anderson. As we take a look there at the difference in his numbers between June and July. Here's the first pitch to him. Lined but speared on a hop. Pro to first will be in time, and there's one gone here to start the second. That is good. The right fielder. So here's how the Colorado Rockies are positioned defensively. And let's take a look at outfielder David Dahl, another guy who profiles not only in center field but can cover both corners. Speed is his game, and he's only going to continue to get better. Into the box, Harold Ramirez. As he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. Ramirez is a guy that has a lot of speed no doubt about that and while that's certainly a weapon for him offensively it could be argued that it benefits him just as much on the defensive side of the ball given the position he plays and not only just speed but first step quickness speed he's able to track balls down that other guys cannot get to and sometimes that's half the equation a ball and two strikes now And he'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. This one sinks low on a touch outside. It's a full count, three and two. Now the payoff pitch home. Popped him up. Story is there for it. Two down. That that the catcher. Jorge Alfaro. Now in the box, Jorge Alfaro. He did not play last night, but clearly back in the starting nine for this one. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. In there, no balls and a strike. Saws him off here as this ball's popped into the air. And this is going to wind up a foul ball. Hit hard to the right side. Foul. Another 0 2 home. Little tardy on that swing as it's well wide at first. Hey, three foul balls in a row right here, searching for that put away stuff. The next 0 2. And he'll try to hold up in time, but to no avail as he went around, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Marlins. They still trail one nothing. At the plate, Trevor Story. And as you check out his righty-lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right-handers. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Well. The 1 0 home. Ball outside.
over the outside half and it's two and one. The Rockies shortstop in front with a three and one count. So that's two pitches in a row above the belt. As a hitter, that's what you're looking for, especially when it's a day game and the ball is carried. That just wasn't a good enough pitch to hit. And he takes ball four. Lead off man's aboard here to begin the home half of the second. Daniel Murphy steps in now. He's got over his first six at bats in the series so far. From the belt, the pitch. Runners going. Fly ball out to straightaway right. Ramirez is there, one away. And ready for his first at bat, Dom Nunez. And he's a guy that's really scuffling at the plate right now. From the stretch, here's the pitch. And the slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. Runners on first with one down. And here's a fastball inside as the count moves to 2 0 now. This is why I love having athleticism and speed on your team. You can tell the runner on first base is certainly messing with the mechanics of the pitcher. Now the 2 0. Hit to first. To second for one. Relay to Aguilar. The double play, and that retires the side. So they go quietly here in this half inning. We'll go now to the top of the third. Colorado's out in front, one to nothing. Here's Matt Joyce now. And as you can tell easily from the splits, he's really struggled away from their home ballpark. Joyce. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Yeah. Oh. After watching that one go by and a ball being called, you can rest assured he knows he's not getting away with another one of those. I guarantee you he's going to be aggressive on this next pitch. Couldn't pull that one back as he clearly broke the plane of the plate, and that'll be ruled a strike. Swing and a miss as he starts the third, the same way he ended the second with a punch out, one away. That's a pretty sad attempt at hitting a baseball right there. No doubt he was completely fooled because that was a curveball, and it looked like he was late on a curveball. That tells me he gave up on it right till the very end, and obviously there was nothing he could do at that point. Standing in now, Jordan Yamamoto, as he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. The wind up and the 0 1. And here's a foul tip into the catcher's glove, moves it to 0 2 now. Man, this guy's in a good groove right now. Seven straight retired. He's locked in. Swing and a liner. Bases are empty. One man out. A ball and two strikes to the Marlins pitcher. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. You certainly know he's not trying to work around the pitcher. But sometimes the hardest thing to do is to throw a strike to a guy that you know won't swing the bat. A swing and a miss. He offered it a ball way outside the strike zone for out number two. 
Jonathan Dion. To the plate now, Jonathan Villar. Batting left-handed here as he takes a look at strike one. One for one after a single this first time up. Swung on and missed. Bases are empty here with two men out. Still no balls and two strikes. Another 0 and 2 coming. Line toward the alley in left center. And that's in for a base hit. His second in as many trips to the plate. So he's quickly into scoring position now with a two out double here in the third. And as we show you the Marlins leaderboard you can see there his current total fourth best on the Miami ball club. Into the box now, Miguel Rojas. As the first pitch here's a bit high, it's ball one. Runner in scoring position with two gone. And ooh, looked like a definite pitcher's pitch there on the inside, one and one. the stretch and able to lay off the fastball the way here two and one now runner in scoring position at second with two down and here's a ball hit in the air coming in is Blackman but this will land untouched. Two and two. Here it is. Pitch outside. The throw. Short hop, but he's out. Great play to pick the throw and slap the tag on him to end the inning. Nothing doing for the Marlins. They're on the short end of a one to nothing score. Bottom of the third now. And next will be the pitcher, Antonio Senzatella. The pitcher. Antonio. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And he'll power in a fastball that time at 94 for strike one. Strike two called on the inner half. 0 and 2 now. Let's see if he tries to climb the ladder right here, change his eye level, or bounce something in the dirt. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Dickerson is under this one. And he puts it away for the first down. Back to the top of the order now. And striding into the plate next will be Rymel Tapia. First pitch of the at bat. And they start him out away with a cold strike. Liner into right center. That's a base hit. And this one bounds around against the wall. And he's in there easily at second with a one out double. Well, he was definitely struggling coming into this one, but I think we can say that cold streak is officially over. That's his second hit of the game, and it goes for extra bases. We'll see now if this game proves to be a huge turning point for him. At the 
plate now. Garrett Hampson as he takes a called strike on the black. It's 0 and 1 reached by way of a fielder's choice his first time around. He's ready. Here's the 0 1. That's the ball. One and one. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. For me, check swings are right there next to bang-bang bang plays at first as the most difficult calls for an ump to make. Taking a look at show motion, the batter doesn't appear to hold up enough, so I think the call was right. He's set, and the pitch. Slider bends into the middle of the strike zone taken for a strike. Two out here and a runner at second. Got him to go after that one, and he's in a quick hold, 0 and 2. So back to back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? Hey, that's back to back really good sliders. I wouldn't be surprised if he threw another one right here. Looks like he's got that slide ball in his back pocket right now. Just off the end of the bat, it's a foul ball, and he'll stick around. Here's the 0-2. One and two is the count. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. From the stretch, the one two grounder down the line at third. Chopper to short. Scooped up. Throw over to Aguilar at first will take care of him to end the inning. One left for Colorado, but they're up one to nothing. New inning set to get underway and stepping up as the shortstop Miguel Rojas. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Your ball one strike. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Now a ball hit towards Story at short right to him. Throw to first in time, one gone here in the fourth. The batter, the left fielder, Corey Dickerson. Now with the play, Corey Dickerson flied out in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball below the zone, that's ball one. The 1-0. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. Blackman going back, but he can't get to this one. It's off the wall. And he'll reach second now with one away. So up until this point, they've had to bite and scratch for every single thing. But he puts a good swing on this one and nearly knocks it out of the park. So we'll see if it's contagious and his partner can pick him up right here. So now to the plate, Jesus Aguilar. As he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. And 
did he go around? No, he did not. Ball two. Both clubs with three hits in the ball game. On a line, that's a base hit in the left field. And the runner from second will stay put at third, so they're runners at the corners now with one away. Boy, there's a bullet base hit right there, but you have to hold there, D Row, to make sure that gets down and isn't caught for a line drive double play. Yeah, you have to play the game right there and respect the infield and respect the line drive. I know he wants to get a ribby for his buddy, but that's the way the game's played. Stepping in now, Ryan Anderson. This is in the air out to right. And that ball gets down out near the wall and should be extra bases. Well, the beat goes on with this guy, runner in scoring position. No doubt when he comes up, he's thinking RBI. What does he do? Double the drive and another run. This guy is a money, money run producer. Into the box, Harold Ramirez as he rips it on the ground to second. And that is into right field, the base hit. And not in time as the run scores. Now and now time will be called here as you see the pitching coach making his way after the mound to pay a quick visit. In now, Jorge Alfaro, as he'll take a changeup here for strike one. Alfaro, the former Philly, he was acquired via trade last year. I know he tell you he'd like to be playing a little bit better, but I think it's as advertised for this ball club right now. I think the manager is getting exactly what they expected. Fastball called for strike two. With one out and runners on the corner, some managers like to hit and run here. It's a little risky, but it can help you stay out of the double play if it's well executed. Now a fastball here that'll wisely lay off and it's one and two. Count even at two and two to the Marlins catcher. Having a hard time putting this hitter away here and when I was looking at the tape on him from his last start this is what I saw a lot of. He's not closing the door on guys and, and when that's the case they eventually get a pitch that they can do something with. Two runs, six hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. Classic slider down and away for the strike out there. Not a whole lot to say about that pitch that hasn't been said a million times already. That's just a real tough pitch for a hitter to pick up out of a pitcher's hand, so they end up chasing when they're in protect mode. At the plate, Matt Joyce. Line toward right center. And that'll get down out there for extra bases. And the run will score all the way from first. And it's a 4-1 to one game. They say when it rains, it pours. And it's pouring out there right now. Drives in two more with that shot, making it four runs in the inning. This inning is starting to get away from him. To the plate now, Jordan Yamamoto, as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. And a chance now to increase his lead if he can deliver something here with two gone. Ready with the 1 0. Ball, that's up. My bet is he's getting the take sign now on 2 0. If he's having a hard time throwing strikes to the pitcher, you might as well let him work himself into trouble.
from the belt. Kicks and deals. Nope, that's outside. Ball. It's amazing how guys can lose focus sometimes when the weaker hitters come up, especially the pitchers. You got to stay on the attack and minimize pitches and get these guys out in a hurry. Four runs here in this half inning. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. The three and one pitch. Hit hard on the ground to second. Reined in. On to first, and it's in time as they're finally able to retire him. So it's four runs on five hits, no errors, and a man left. On now to the bottom half of inning number four. It's the Marlins four and the Rockies one. So next it'll be the number four batter for the Rockies. Charlie Blackman set to lead us off in the home half of the fourth inning. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. One out. Two and oh. No strike. You know, sometimes it takes a pitcher a few pitches to get going, but those two pitches weren't even close. Falls behind in the count, two and oh. It's time to start getting locked in. The 2-0. Two, -oh. two balls and a strike now. Into the windup. Here's the two and one pitch. Shin high fastball that time. Ball three. Well, it's a pretty well-known fact that your batting average goes up as you get into more favorable hitters counts and that's especially true when we're talking about this kind of hitter belted high and deep into right center back goes Joyce still going back if you don't eat the meat you can't have any pudding how can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat solo shot to right center number 23 for him thus far and the rocks are back within a couple it's 4 2 now Well, he had success earlier in the day, driving in their only run. And that success continues when he takes this pitch to his liking and makes sure some lucky kid gets a souvenir. He's been huge for them in this one. David Dahl to the plate now. As he'll try to hold back on the swing, but he went around for the first strike. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Not close with that when it's way above the strike zone. Two runs, four hits, no errors in the ball game for the Rockies thus far. Two and one to David Dahl. Liner toward right center. Joyce is there and he has it for the first out. Well, this one was squared up pretty good, but just like pitchers give up hits on well executed pitches, batters make outs on balls they couldn't have hit much better. Standing in, Trevor Story. One run in and one gone so far in this inning. Here's the first pitch to him. 0 oh, and 1 the count. One out, nobody on. A ball and a strike to Trevor Story. Bounced softly in front of the plate. He's got to hurry. Throw gets him two down. Number nine, Daniel 
Digging in for his second at bat, Daniel Murphy. So far, 0 for 1 with a fly out. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Lays off 1 and 0. Two out, nobody on. Popped him up. Aguilar in foul ground. Makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. But the Rockies do get one back via the solo home run. We played four. It's now four to two. Back to the top of the Miami lineup now and stepping in Jonathan VR. And Dan, I'm sure the starter on the mound would like to hit the rewind button on that last inning. Oh, no doubt about that, Mac. That was a really rocky frame, but clearly not enough to chase him from this game. We'll see if he's still shaking a bit or if he's able to put this behind him. Here we go. Here comes the first pitch. Ball. Well, he's still out there to start the fifth inning, but it's been a real grind of a start for him. The pitch count is much higher than he'd like it to be, so it's hard to imagine him working really deep into this game. The 1-0 home. Ball. I'm sure he's frustrated by that call. Probably could have been a strike, but at the same time, earning strikes from the umpire is a real thing. If you've been all over the place like he has, you're just not going to get much help from the umpires. On they get him off balance there as he reaches for that one but can't find it. It's two and one. Man, this guy's been locked in all game long. I don't know where that ugly swing just came from. All even now, two and two. Now here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Really fooled him that time for the first out. It's always nice to keep a guy that has good wheels off base. And that's just what they did right there. Big strikeout, keep that guy off the base path. At the plate now, Miguel Rojas. As he will take a look at a fastball in there as that strike zone expands just a little. It's 0 and 1. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Oh one. Here's the pitch. Nope. Ball. Four two. Our score here as we play inning number five. Right. And he comes back with a fastball. One and two now. Take a step back right here. After three fastballs in a row, there is no chance he throws you a fourth. The one two is laid off for ball two. He pops it up. Hampson ranging into shallow right. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. The left field, number 23, Corey Dickerson. Digging in and looking for more, Corey Dickerson. He doubled earlier in the game, one for two to this point. And now pitch on the way. Bases are empty here with two men out. Hit on the ground down the first baseline. Uh, this will get foul for strike two. And he got him. Miami down in order, but they still lead this one four to two. Welcome back to Coors Field in Denver as we check in with Heidi Watney. 
Thanks, Matt. I talked with Rockies skipper Bud Black between innings, specifically about his club's offensive output to this point. And one thing he stressed to me was the need for them to have better at-bats when they've got runners on base. With just one hit with runners in scoring position in the game, you can understand why he feels that way. But he also says he likes the way his guys are responding to the adversity. It seems as though they're keeping their energy and mood up, so we'll see if they can start coming through with some big hits as we go forward. Good go. stuff, Heidi. We're Thanks. The catcher, John Nugent. Now here it comes. There's a fastball called for a strike on the inside corner. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Inside and low, two and one. Line towards center field. But this is unfortunately right at him in center field as he takes it in for the first out. Number 49, Antonio Sam Hilliard will move into the on deck circle now to try to get something started here with one gone in the inning. And he takes ball one. He'll start this one at 269. Eight home runs and 19 driven in. That'll be a souvenir, and the count will move to one and one. Bases are empty, one man out. This is line to left. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. As we take a look at the pitch count, you can see that it's not that high. But you have to wonder maybe if the heat is taking it out on this guy a little bit. The weather can be the great equalizer, especially when the temps are starting to rise like this. So the lineup flips over and digging in. Rymel Tapia, two hits and two trips for him thus far. things first here's a throw over and he's back in standing he's set here it comes one and up. runner at first here one man out and it's fouled away Straightened him up there on that fastball. It's one and two now. Now a fastball awfully close, but he doesn't get the call. It's two and two now. a breaking ball that couldn't quite catch the inside. Got to execute a good pitch right here. Runner at first is probably going to be on the move and you got one of the better hitters on their team up at the plate. Runners on first with one down. And awfully close there on three and two but take your base says Earl Hendricks. It's ball four. Man, that's just painful for a pitcher right there. A 3-2 offering that was right on the corner, but he couldn't get him to chase, and he doesn't get the call. Can't beat yourself up about that one too much. So runners at first and second here with one away. And up steps Garrett Hampson to bat.
from the belt the pitch sends that one out of play for strike one. Fouled off. Here comes the nothing and two pitch. What a two. He wasn't even close to swinging right there. That was a stone cold take. Runners are at first and second with one away. Swing and a ball hit out toward right center. On the move is Joyce. He gets there, and that's the second out. Up next to follow Bobby, the third baseman, Nolan Arenado. Here's Nolan Arenado, and we'll see what he can do here with a pair of runners on base and two gone here in the fifth. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Well. Looking to wiggle out of this. Here it is. In the dirt here. Good job to corral this quickly as the runners hold on. Two men are on with two men out. Three and oh now. This is a spot you like to be in as a good hitter. Runners in scoring position and count leverage in your favor. Here it comes, the 3-0. Arenado swings, and this one is crushed out to left field. But that'll stay in the park as it's off the wall. As he arrives at second without a play, as they also push across his score to make it a one-run game. When this thing left the bat, I thought it had three run homer written all over it, but it bounces off the wall, so only one run scores. And now a chance for his buddy to return the favor and bring in one or maybe two. And that'll bring in Charlie Blackman as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. Already a home run and a double for him in this one. the set and the 1 0 and he lays off here as well it's 2 0 now to the Colorado right fielder hey, you want to talk about being in a zone this guy's been raking lately and it all starts with his pitch selection two great takes and he's almost daring the pitcher just go ahead and challenge him pulls this one into the air out into right field and he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away and that ends the inning. One for the Rockies in the inning, and it comes on the double by Arenado. Through five innings, it's the Marlins four and the Rockies three. Carlos Estevez is on his way into the ballgame now as he'll be making his 50th appearance of the year. Top half of the sixth about to get started. And up next will be the power hitting first baseman, Big Jesus Aguilar. From the stretch. Now a right-hander has started to get loose in the Colorado bullpen. The 1-0. No, if you've been paying attention, the guy on the mound does not want to come inside. If I'm at the plate, I'm leaning out over. And he turns this one around high and deep to center field. Ranging back is Tapia. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Now 
That was a tough play, so let's take another look at it with Showtrack. Seemed to get a solid read off the bat, took a good angle at it, and he covered over 100 feet to make the grab. And I'm sure he'll be getting some high fives for that one. Ready now for the Marlins. Brian Anderson, one for two with a double on the ledger so far. Here's the first pitch to him. That missed. That's the ball. 1 0. Now the 1 0. A swing and a miss. That's the first strike. Now the one and one pitch is taken for ball two. Wow, kind of an interesting pitch call there. The batter flailed at the pitch away on the previous one, so you'd think you'd go right back there, but instead they decided to come in. Make him prove he can adjust before you do. And this is on the inside edge, perhaps off the inside edge, but it's a called strike two and two now. Started to go. Did he hold up in time? Yes, says the first base umpire. It's ball three now. And awfully close there on three and two, but take your base, says Earl Hendricks. It's ball four. Now batter, right fielder, Harold. Ramirez. Digging in, Harold Ramirez in his career against this pitcher. He's a 333 hitter. First offering on its way. A fastball here as he'll take a look at ball one. One and oh. Four three our score here as we play inning number six. In the air to straightaway right. After it is Blackman. He gets there, and that's the second out. Now batting, Chetner, Jorge Alfaro. So it's a runner at first with two men out, and up next will be the big catcher, Jorge Alfaro. From the stretch. strikeouts early in the game but he's done a much better job in this at bat trying to get ahead and put himself at a good hitters count and that's taken for a strike on the inside corner two and one nasty 2 0 slider right there for a strike no shame in tipping your hat. Faro in front, three balls and a strike. A runner on first with two away. Three and two, full count. Three, two, two out, runner on first. Lots of possible outcomes on this pitch. Now the payoff pitch home. Line drive, base hit. Oh, and he botches it. Throw comes in quickly from left, so even on the hit and run, they'll hold things to first and second here. No mistake what he was sitting on. Fastball, middle of the plate, kept his hands back, stayed through the baseball, and delivers a hard hit line drive. Stepping in now, Matt Joyce. And so he'll take a look at ball one. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ballgame. The 1 0. Good deception on the slider there as he's way out in front. Oh, 
Hit down the line at first. But this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. Two down runners at first and second. And two and two. Two and two. Here it is. Frozen for strike three, and that retires the side. Marlins strand a pair, but they hang on to a one run lead, four to three. Eliezer Hernandez enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Number 57, Eliezer. Striding into the box, David Dahl. He'll do battle with a new arm out there in their half of the sixth. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Hernandez offers up perhaps one of the nastiest sliders around, and it won't be uncommon to see a lot of off-balance swings against it, and it'll be easy to see why once you see it come out of his hand. He's got a huge break on it. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Dickerson on the move. He makes the catch. A great effort to get there and record the first out of the now inning. Now. And that brings in the power hitting shortstop Trevor Story. He was a ground out victim last time up. First offering on its way. Looks like a left-hander up and throwing now in that Marlins bullpen. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Now a fastball gets the upper part of the zone for strike two. Your idea of working the count goes out the window. You're frustrated right now. Down 0-2. Got to find a way to grind. Swung on and crushed. Everyone just stands there and watches it fly. A solo home run here off the bat of Trevor Story. Number 18 for him on the campaign as that'll pull him even at four apiece. That's the price you pay right there when you try and sneak a fastball past this guy power hitter and every power hitter in the league knows you got to start with the numero uno number one man you got to get on the heater and adjust to everything else and he did just that. Here's Daniel Murphy now. As he looks at a fastball on the inside corner for strike one no hits to this point. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. That's the ball. Man, that's one of those. How could you not swing at that one? A good take there on that pitch. And now a fastball, but he's able to hold off on it, and it's 2 and 1 now. Ah. 2 and 2 now. Two balls and two strikes to Murphy now. That's a ball. Ball count. Now another one hit deep to left. Dickerson going back. Now this will rattle up against the wall. And he'll pull into second with one away. 
Wow, this is a perfect example of a Wiley veteran doing what needs to be done to deliver for his team. Yeah, and just watch this swing. Instead of trying to do too much with it and pull it, he stays inside the ball and is able to smack it to the opposite field for a double. Into the box now, Dom Nunez. As he'll pop this one foul off to the left and out of play. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. Here's the 0 1. Line drive, base hit into the left center field gap. in at second safely as they jump ahead with a run scoring on the play. So much of this game is situational hitting guys. Nice job there. Yeah you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given a chance and he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there safely on second and his buddy is high fiving teammates in the dugout. And that's into the corner, a foul ball in right. One out and a runner on second base. Lays off the slider and it's one and one. From the stretch. Pulled toward right center field. Long run for the right fielder. He gets there and makes a fine running play for the second out. So the Rockies lineup turns over and to the plate, Rymel Tapia. It was a walk in his last trip. Looking to keep this a one-run game, the pitch hit on the ground to short. Throw over to Aguilar at first will take care of him to end the inning. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. We're through six full. Rockies lead it five to four. Jairo Diaz is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 37, Jairo. John Birdie will pinch hit here and he's the potential tying run. Into the corner and slicing foul. Birdie swings and throws from the right side and stands at five foot ten. He was taken in the 18th round back in 2011. I know this guy wouldn't go into the category of superstar but to grind out the career he has being drafted where he was my hats off to him. And the throw to first is in time so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number now, seven. Second base Jonathan Dion. Digging in the switch hitter, Jonathan Villar. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. First pitch coming, here it is. Ball inside. Pretty good pitch right there. Fastball in off the plate. One of the things you want to do as a pitcher, try to stand those hitters up. 1 0 pitch. And he oh, won't bite that. at that one either. It's 2 0. Up and in. Big danger now. It's 3 0.
Now here's the pitch. You maybe get two pitches a game where all the guesswork goes out the window. This is certainly that situation. Swing and a drive to right. There it goes. That one is out of here. This game is tied. Jonathan Villar has just clubbed a milestone home run of sorts. It's the 100th of his career. Well, obviously, it's not easy hitting home runs, Matt, especially at this level. 100 home runs is nothing to scoff at, so I'm sure he'll be proud of this accomplishment when he gets to really think about it after a game, and you know he'll want that ball to hold on to. Miguel Rojas as the first pitch to him is taken low and away for ball one. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. One oh count here it is. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. One out nobody on. Hit out towards second. He's got it. Throw to Murphy's in time, and there are two gone now. The left fielder, number 23, Corey Dickerson. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Corey Dickerson. He went down on strikes last time up. Yeah, and he didn't put up much of a fight either, Matty. Got to find a way. Can't go down three pitches. I don't care if you're staring at him or swinging oh, at him. You have to find a way to make this pitcher work a little bit harder. One and one the count. Two out, nobody on. Had nibbled the corner there, but missed two and one. And he misses low here, so the count goes to three and one. When you're playing close games like this, base runners mean everything, so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. Three and one pitch. Swing and the ball hit foul as this will find the seats in right. Too close for comfort, and he did a good job just to make contact. Hit in the air down the right field line. But this is going to wind up a foul ball. Yanked on the ground down the line. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Making him work out there. The ninth pitch of the at bat coming up. And he struck him out, so he was forced to make nine pitches that at bat, but he'll take it as the inning is over. Marlins able to knock things up on the solo home run. Bottom of the seventh inning coming up. Get up and stretch. All even at five apiece. Brandon Kinsler gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Number 20, Brandon Kinsler.
ready to go for the last half of the inning. And up steps Garrett Hampson to bat. The second baseman, number one. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Close there, but he doesn't get the call with the breaking ball. And how important is it to keep this guy off base in a tie ball game? One away. Now batting, third baseman, Nolan Barantado. At the plate, Nolan Arenado. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Well, he got a good pitch to hit last time up. Looked for it up in the zone and didn't miss it. Those are the pitches you only get maybe once an A.B., maybe once a game, maybe once a week. So he certainly capitalized on it last time. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Oh. A ball and a strike. One and one. The 1-1 one, one is looked at for ball number two. The 2-1 home. A shot down the first baseline. But this will be a foul ball as that evens things at 2-2. Two and two. Here's the pitch. Down the third baseline, but a foul ball as it holds it two and two. Bases are empty, one man out. Hit back up the middle, fielded cleanly. And he'll whip this one over to first, and he gets his man for the second out. The right fielder, number 19, Charlie Blackburn. Two away now in the Colorado seventh, and that'll bring up Charlie Blackman. First pitch of the at bat. Off the outside that time as the breaking ball can't catch the zone. Kinsler, a right hander who stands in even six feet. His contract is set to expire at the end of this season, so he may end up hitting the market this winter. Yeah, Matty, it's going to be interesting to see where this guy lands at the end of this season. A lot of variables come into place. He's had a long career. It's going to be interesting to see if a team steps out past one or two years for this player. Well thrown sinker that time down, but in the strike zone. Two balls and a strike. And it's two balls and two strikes now. And this will be fouled away. Set to deal on two and two. Full count. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he lays off. Ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. When a guy's been swinging the bat as well as he has in this series, you definitely want to take the bat out of his hands. A free pass to first is better than what he's been doing the last couple of games. So it's a runner at first with two men out. And in the bat next will be the outfielder, David Dahl. From the stretch, here's the pitch. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Chasing after it is Joyce. 
He's there to track it down and that'll end the inning. Rockies strand one. This remains a five all ball game. Wade Davis is on out of the bullpen now as he gets to work in his 60th game of the season. So here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Jesus Aguilar. He'll start things out for us here in inning number eight. Aguilar. First pitch on its way. This one's outside quite a bit off the plate that time. Good spot to be in right now as a hitter. Count your favor 1 0. Good time to get a fastball and turn it loose. And ooh, looked like a definite pitcher's pitch there on the inside 1 and 1. Wings through it for strike number two. And the knuckle curved that time. Got him swinging, and that's the first out. Time to give you a look now at the numbers for our two starting pitchers and really nothing to write home about on either line as neither guy was able to last even six innings. Into the box Brian Anderson one for two with a double on his line thus far. He's ready here's the first offering. And a bit too high with that one. It's 1 0. Action in the bullpen now as a right hander begins to throw out there. Now the 1 0. Davis playing here in his age 34 season he was selected in the third round back in the 2004 first year player draft. Yeah he has turned himself into a really nice ball player. I wouldn't put him on a superstar level but you know what they didn't miss with this pick either you go into high rounds and you carve out a career the way this guy has nice pick. Fastball close but he didn't get it two and one. Now here it comes. On a line, that's a base hit. Chalk up another multi hit game for this guy. He is absolutely on fire. He's been on a nice hot streak as of late, and I don't see it ending anytime soon. At the plate, Harold Ramirez. On the line, that's a base hit in the left field. And this, of course, is a ballpark that yields a lot of doubles as we take a look at the team leaders for the most two base hits this year. And you can see, in fact, that these guys currently lead the National League in that category and, in fact, lead all of baseball as well. Digging in to try it again. Jorge Alfaro. He singled his last time up. Yeah, and just another simple single to the outfield would be a big one right here. Don't try and do too much. You know there's a potential base open right there. Maybe sit off speed. He's set and the pitch. Here's a line drive. And he's given him the lead and maybe more than that. He pulls into second safely as two runs come across to score and they grab the lead. 
Boy, that's a huge base hit right there, dear. Well, we're getting late into this one, and that gives them the lead by two. Yeah, that could be a backbreaker right there. We'll see how this one ends up, but nice job to get that knock right there to drive in a pair. Now, for the block. So they'll make a matchup move here and bring on a southpaw to face the left-handed hitter due up. To the plate now, Matt Joyce. As the first pitch sinker misses to him, it's ball one. Pazos has seen his role change with those one batter lefty specialists going the way of the dodo as a part of MLB's pace of play initiatives. Joyce in front two balls and no strikes. Pazos 28 years old. This is his sixth season for him in the big leagues. The 2 0 on the way. Well, this is the matchup they wanted bringing in the reliever, but falling behind 2 0 doesn't exactly help the situation very much. And he misses ball four. So he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces. Yeah, that strategy is great when it works, but when it doesn't, it's ugly. And he was here to face one guy, and he couldn't get it done. Monte Harrison will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. Number 60, Monte Harrison. Swing and a miss, and he's behind 0 and 1. Still plenty to be desired in terms of batting average down in the 180s entering play. Two home runs and 16 RBIs. On its way, the 0 1 pitch. First and second now, one man out. And here's a pitch inside, and that got him. These guys are pros, and they're tough, but I know that one hurt. He'll never show it, though. Too much pride at stake. So the batting order turns over now and set to go Jonathan Villar. It was a solo shot for him in his last at-bat. Yeah, that last at-bat, Daddy, he turned that fastball around. He didn't hit it a ton. He didn't hit it a country mile. But, hey, listen, a home run is a home run. First pitch of the at-bat. And a high strike to begin the at-bat. It's 0-1. Hey, now he's got me confused up here. This is a known sinker baller out on the mound trying to roll a double play, and he throws him a four-seamer. Bases are loaded here. One man out. Called strike 0 and 2. Just way too patient in this situation. With the bases loaded like this, this is your chance to be the hero. Two quick strikes, and now the 0 2. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Waiting on it is Tapia. He makes the catch. Here comes the runner from third. And the runner scores from third as they extend their lead. One of the things you want to do as an offense, right, is stay fundamental and keep pushing. A great job there. Sack fly pushes the third run across in this inning. Now at the plate, Miguel Rojas. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. He's set. Here it comes. No, that's in. There are a couple of points in every game that could decide winning or losing. This is one of those critical spots. Time to make some great pitches. The 1-0. Swing, high drive, left field and deep. And, oh, he missed a home run by a matter of feet. It's off the wall. And not in time as the second run scores. 
Wow, what a great piece of hitting here as he took a big swing at that one. Almost got it out of here for a three-run blast, but he'll be happy with a two-run double as well. Yeah, he's not happy either way, but I'm sure the man on the mound is more than a bit relieved that that hit didn't turn into something worse. So now to the plate, Corey Dickerson, as he'll take a look at his strike on the outside corner. It's 0-1. He comes into this appearance in the midst of a one-for-four day. one well you can see he's coming right at this guy just pounding the ball in the strike zone he certainly has the advantage now this guy hasn't even swung the bat yet oh and two here it comes struck him out struck him out again I should say his third punch out of the game so a very good outburst here as five runs come across and allow them to take the lead not too many more shots left home half of the eighth coming up it's the Marlins 10 and the Rockies 5. Your Adam Conley is yes. on to pitch now out of the bullpen in the bottom eight. half of the eighth. Number 61, Adam Conley. Trevor Story steps in now. He comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. The last at bat, Manny B. We heard this guy's a good fastball hitter. He got a fastball and didn't miss it. We'll see if they pitch him a little bit differently this time and mix in some off speed pitches. No balls in one strike. Comes set with the 0 and 1. And boy, was he ever oh, fooled on that pitch. It's 0-2 now. And I really don't know how you swing at that. He must have had his mind up. He was going to swing as soon as the ball came out of the pitcher's hand. Now a swing and a fly ball. Right fielder is on the run. And he tracks it down. Nice play for the first down. The first baseman, number nine, Daniel. So one gone for the Rockies here in the eighth and up next postseason record holder Daniel Murphy. Here's the first pitch to him. Strike one to start the at bat. One out nobody on. Pulled toward right center field chasing after it is Joyce. But he's not going to get there, and he's headed for extra bases again. And he is in at second base with a one-out double. As we take a look at the replay here, you can see that it was a hanging changeup. Nice job of staying back on it, and he's able to tattoo it for a double. And you know, if that pitch would have supplied more velocity, it might have been out of here. He hit it right on the screws. At the plate now, Dom Nunez, as he'll look at a fastball too high for ball one. And 2 0 now as this misses below the knees. Clearly staying away from him in this at bat with that runner in scoring position tells me they're trying to force him to reach for something and maybe roll over on it. the 2 0 swing and a liner a quick glove at third and there were two gone the pitcher number 47 Jay Paso. Ian Desmond will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here number 20 Ian Shepard. Got him fishing that time. 0 and 1. From the belt, the pitch. And this one's in the dirt. Good job keeping it close as the count goes to 1 and 1. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul.
hit to short. He's right there. Throw over to Aguilar at first will take care of him to end the inning. One hit, one left. We've played eight full. Miami's out in front, 10 to 5. Brian Shaw enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. All set for the start of the inning, and here comes the first baseman, Jesus Aguilar. From the stretch. Ninth right. inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. The 0 and 1 delivery. Behind 0 and 2 now. Nothing in two count and the pitch and he wasn't going to hit that one with an or the strikeout and there's one gone. It's so hard to hit when you're behind the count 0 and 2 right you have to protect for the fastball you have to look for the soft stuff down and away you're really at a disadvantage when you fall behind 0 and 2. Into the box now Brian Anderson as he'll take one up in the zone but indeed in the strike zone for the first strike. Bases are empty one man out. Now a swing and a miss at a slider for a strike. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Hit out towards second. And that is through into center field for a one out single. Boy, this guy is off to some kind of series, and he's one of the better road hitters in all of baseball. Yeah, and some guys just have a knack for lighting it up on the road, getting that good night's sleep, and finding a way to get to the yard early and work on their craft. Stepping in now, Harold Ramirez. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. Two hits in four attempts to this point. One-o -oh count, here it is. Shot back up the middle. In there, a base hit. Hey guys I like the execution by the batter there he got a hanger in the middle of the plate he could have come unglued but he didn't he stayed focused and drove a line drive base hit. At the plate Jorge Alfaro as the first pitch to him is a changeup that can't find the zone it's ball one. It's been a two for four effort for him so far in the ball game. He's ready. Here's the 1 0. Comes back with the cutter and gets it by him. One and one now. And this one's up around the eyes, two and one. Hey, the bullpen needs to step up in this situation. I got to believe the manager was hoping for way more than this. Runners are at first and second with one away. Hit well down the left field line, but back into the crowd foul. Two two in the dirt here. The runners will hold tight, but it's a full count now. Three and two. Now 
And awfully close there on three and two, but take your base, says Earl Hendricks. It's ball four. That's a big no no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. Stepping into the box, Matt Joyce. He hits here in a spot where he might be able to put this one out of reach. Yeah, Matt, down five, another run across here could very well put the nail in the coffin. Mentally, they might still feel like they've got a shot if they could get out of this jam, though. First pitch of the at-bat. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. That's a good pitch to lay off right there, that cutter inside. And that is a real tough pitch for hitters to lay off of. And a lot of times, if you do swing at that cutter in, you're going to end up with some firewood in a broken bat. Now the 1-0 misses, ball two. Nowhere to put anybody. 2-0 count, not a good spot to be in as a pitcher. Bases are loaded with only one out. Strike taken as that one catches the outer part of the plate. That's how you open up the outside part of the plate. Pound two balls in and they get right back outside. Nice pitch. Set and the two and one pitch. That's lifted the other way out to left. Catch will be made here. Tagging is the runner from third. And the run is in to score from third. Hey, talk about having a productive inning. You like to see that. You like to add on runs anytime you can. And a sack fly here gives their team another insurance run. And they're starting to blow this thing wide open. Misses outside and a bit high. One ball, no strikes. Runners at the corners, two men out. Lifted down the line in left. And that will end up a foul ball. The 1-1. Grounded down the third baseline. Arenado has it. Throw to first in time. And the big inning is avoided as the side is retired. Marlins forced to settle for one. To the bottom of the ninth we go. Top of the order due up. It's the Marlins 11 and the Rockies 5. Yimi Garcia, a right-hander standing now, six foot even, will take over the pitching duties here. Yimi Garcia. So striding forward now, Rymel Tapia. He was a ground out victim last time up. The center fielder, Rymel Tapia. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. One ball, no strike. The 1 0. Line toward the alley in left center. So he'll add one to his total as that falls in. He's got three hits in this one. Man, this will wind up a closer play than I thought, but he's in there with two bases. Wow, not sure what the pitcher was thinking. Serving up a fastball right over the heart of the plate. His eyes got as big as saucers as he blasts this thing, putting himself in the scoring position to start off the inning. to the plate now Garrett Hampson as the fastball is swung on and missed good location down at the knees for strike one struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here on 
on its way. The 0-1 pitch. Down and away, ball one. One and one. The 1-1 one, one home. Skied into very shallow right. Ramirez is in a few steps as he takes it for the first down. The throw is wild and he gets away. Now they tag him out between second and third and it's a double play. Rockies down to their final out now. And in next it'll be the perennial MVP candidate third baseman Nolan Arenado. Here's the first pitch to him. That missed. That's the ball. Hey, there aren't too many power hitters in the game that would let that pitch go by. Two out, nobody on. And this is swung on and missed. So with that, they find themselves down to their final strike here this afternoon. Last strike now for Colorado. Two balls, ball. two strikes to Nolan Arenado. Two and two. Two two pitches fouled away. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. Swung on and belted. Get out the rye bread and mustard, Grandma. It's grand salami time. <laughs> Nolan Arenado touches them all. And that is 27 for him on the year. As they try to claw back, it's a five-run deficit. What a blast that was. So here it is again, accompanied by Show Track. Great exit velocity, and the projected distance comes back at over 470 feet. An impressive thing to watch when it happened, and even more impressive to quantify with the numbers. Now back the right field, Charlie. So now to the plate, Charlie Blackman. And so look at a breaking ball that misses for ball one. Well, this one's been a bit of a head scratcher despite their home run production today. Yeah, Matty V, this is one of those that you kind of scratch your head and you go, wow, you hit the ball all the ballpark, but still not enough offense. It just goes to show you this sport is still D roll all about pitching. It is. It's, it, it begins and ends on that bump right there. And there's just so many facets to the game defense, base running. It's just not the team that hits the most home runs is going to win the ball game. Popped him up. The catch is made, and the Marlins bounce back here to take the finale and earn a split of this four game series as this one is over. You might think it's just another win, but it's awfully hard to win in this game, especially on the road. But they find a way to get it done, and they should be very happy with this performance. 11 to 6, the final score in this ball game. The Miami Marlins came through late, taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory. Brandon Kinsler gets the win in relief, his second of the year. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network.